if you look at the competition stats, we have the most points per game. Oops, where did I go? You have the most points per game in 2.54. We have the least conceded in 18. So this is the tactic that I'm using to completely dominate La Liga in Football Manager 2024. I'm actually using three tactics, but I'm going to walk you through the next two tactics as we go along in the video, but just take a sneak peek at how the league is actually turning out. We do have the most amount of points, we're 89, and the second is Real Madrid with 80 points, so we're nine points ahead of Real Madrid, right? And Barcelona are down in six. And if you look at the shadow that we went on to have, we've had some good victories. I think the, the only time we lost was against PSG in the Champions League, which was a difficult situation because they had Mbappe and they had Moziala, they had Vinicius Jr. All these other ridiculous players that I don't even know how PSG actually got their hands on them, but they did. But ever since we got knocked out by PSG, we've been going on a roll ever since. I've made up my mind that I'm not actually going to lose any game. And we haven't actually lost. We've beaten Racing Santander, we've beaten Villarreal, Getafe, Real San Sebastian. They're actually one of the good teams in this game, Real Sociedad. We beat them in the league and we also beat them in the cup. After beating Real Madrid by three goals to two in the semi-final, we beat them in the Super Cup, Real San Sebastian, by three goals to one. And all this were doing it while following the board directives the board objectives because sometimes if you go into football manager and then you look at the club vision they're going to tell you to play a certain way which usually doesn't coincide with what you would like to play so most of the op tactics that i've seen on football manager haven't actually gone by playing direct football but for some reason i've found a way to play direct football in this game even though my board of directors are not really happy with the way I'm doing it, but it is direct football. We're going to look at the tactics much sooner. But everybody's happy. The supporters are happy. The board is happy the way I'm the manager and I'm happy as well. Looking at where we are in the league, we've only lost two games all season. That's to Real Madrid and Sporting Giga. In both games, we lost 3-2. Games that we ideally should have won, but they were, they were tricky games, all of them, to be honest. And we somehow managed to do well and what nine points ahead of everybody else in the league and there are how many games to go they are just like three games to go so in order to lose this league title i would have to lose my remaining three games and that is against lj Athletic club Bilbao, and sevilla which i doubt i'm going to lose to any of these three reason being that sevilla are not even okay they're in third place so that's going to be a challenging one Athletic club Bilbao are somewhere in where are they where are they in 16th place and then lj are in 14 so we need to just keep our head down and we will go about winning these fixtures looking at the data hub with the way we've gone on to play throughout the season in our attacking we scored 2.26 goals per game we've had the most shots as well and most of our goals are by not penalties so we're not scoring that many pens we're not even getting that many pens to be honest so 2.03 non-penalty goals and of course dribbles are in there as well fouls against i try to encourage my players to tackle a lot with this tactic so looking at our defense we've only conceded 0.51 goals per game while we're expected to concede 0.70 which is less than a goal per game so we're doing quite well in the league defensively as well so you can see the summary of course we're incredible defensively and we're just included in attack and we're incredibly hard to score against that's one thing i enjoy and as much as i enjoy set pieces i've not really spent a lot of time dealing with it and i'm sure if i did spend a lot more time with set pieces we probably would have not lost those two games that we did but it is what it is and that's football manager and it's the most fun i've had playing in spanish football so before I go into the other two tactics. We look at the first one. Um, what I opted for was to play a back three system with Atletico Madrid because I did go on to sign three defenders mistakenly. I signed Gonzalo Ignacio, Kim Njai, and Anthony Silva much later from Benfica. So I had too many centre backs, right? So I had to devise a system that is actually going to allow me to play that many centre backs. So I had a back three system in there. And I went on to create another two, another set of tactics that could complement this because I also have good wide players that could allow me to play players on the wing someone like Ronnie Baji he's also in the team but he, he can't really play in the center as a number 10 so I had to create another tactic for him if you look at the competition stats we have the most points per game oops where did I go you have the most points per game in 2.54 Real Madrid has scored the most with 95 and we're in there in second place 79 so my emphasis is not in outscoring everybody it's in winning the league and stopping Real Madrid's dominance for crying out loud Real Madrid and Barcelona has always been winning the league so we need to get Atletico Madrid in there for some reason we have the least conceded in 18 Sevilla are in there with 20 but they may not be able to catch up with us looking at the most clean sheet Atletico Madrid again and you'll be shocked that we're actually going very expressive with our system which is why i don't know why we're not conceding that many goals our tactic is very expansive most shots we do have the most shots because we're taking the most chances because we're creating the most chances as well so back to the tactic um i have one wide center back on support duty ideally this guy is going to be on defend which brings me back to my other center back that is playing on support duty here which is josco gavadio i brought in Gavardio for man city first so he's usually in this position so sometimes i have it on support and jose gaia is another 
player that used to be in the system. So I usually have Jose Gaya playing as a wing back on attack DT. And I used to have a wing back on support when I had a player called Sasha Bowie. He's currently injured, so I should be able to find him now. Okay, Sasha Bowie is supposed to be in here playing as a wing back on support DT. But then I later got Patterson from, I think, Everton. Where did I sign Nathan Patterson from? I think he's from Everton. So if you look at the start, yeah, he's from Everton. 27 million from Everton, Nathan Patterson. He's a very attacking wing back. So the issue with Bowie and Patterson is that Patterson loves to attack a lot. So when I'm playing Patterson, I will go for the attacking role. Or when we look at the other tactics that we're looking at, we're going to see why Patterson was actually brought into the team. So in defensive midfield, I have a pairing of ball winning midfielder on support DT and the defensive midfielder on support. The defensive midfielder is the only player that actually has instruction because this player is usually Moises Caicedo. I did bring in Moises Caicedo as well into my team so he is going to take more risk, get further forward, close down more and tackle harder and then the ball winning midfielder is Florentino Luiz. He is one of my best players in this in this league in this season to be honest currently you can see that he has a red card that's his style ball winning me without tackle anybody get the ball back that's my guy in florentino Luis. he's currently <laughs> suspended to be honest ah look at this lad aggression is 14 so he could be higher but he does he does the job of two players to be honest positioning is 18 so he's very solid defensively he concentrates a lot with 17 and then natural fitness so he really gets injured his stamina is right up there as well so if you're looking for a destructive ball winner florentino Luis is your guy and then in attacking midfield i have ada turan no not ada turan sorry ada gula turkish number 10 playing in this role and he complains a lot that i don't usually play him which is awkward because i use this tactic a lot so alagula is usually in this role playing as my number 10 he is playing on support dt because i have two players in attack Rasmus Hoyland and a striker called Lataro Martinez. Lataro Martinez was another player that I actually brought into the team much later. So the Hoyland role is usually on support. I later changed it to, um, to attack when Rasmus Hoyland was complaining that he doesn't like playing on support. He likes playing on attack. This is basically how the tactic is set up. Jan Oblak in goal has a substitute in Antonio Trubin. That's his first name, right? Anatoly Trubin. Sorry, I used to call him Antonio Trubin all this while. Trubin prefers to play as a defensive goalkeeper while Yano Black is very comfortable playing as a super keeper on support. So when I'm having Trubin in here, he's usually on defend. Sometimes I leave it on support and then train Trubin to actually play on support. Looking at the way our system is set up in team instructions, much higher with a high press, much higher defensive line with a high press and they were pressing the opposition relentlessly, much more often trigger press. When we're countering or when we're in transition, it's just counter and counter pressing. I didn't really touch any other thing in all the other instructions. Sometimes I do ask the goalkeeper to distribute it quickly. And that is during the beginning of the season. As it got later towards the end of the season, I, get, I did go on to take this off because I noticed we're being wasteful with our possession. Now in this final in possession instruction is where the tactic has actually changed a lot recently. So what I used to do before was to have a low crossing selection in here. My attacking width was fairly wide and then I used a more direct passing and much higher tempo like this. Slightly more direct, higher tempo. The reason why it's slightly more direct is also why my board of directors or my supporters are disappointed with our playing direct football because they feel we're not playing direct enough. But you can't play too direct, right? You have to not lose possession of the ball. So I opted for this and that attacking direct style of play was actually what helped us get a lot more goals while playing with attacking mentality in this system and that's kind of how the way the team is set up i kind of ignored the supporters because i knew that they were not going to help me get points as much as the supporters were not happy with the way we're playing direct football they are not going to be the ones to play against psg in the champions league and try to get a point it didn't really they weren't really helping so i just had to stick to my tactic and then towards the ending of the season Match the 35 like this. I've settled for slightly or a standard passing directness and slightly higher tempo because teams are starting to see deep now, so you can't really over attack them. So I'm just settling for this to try and have a lot more control of the game and hoping that the mentality being on attack is going to help us play a bit more direct, even though we're using you know standard tempo and standard passing directness. For the alternative tactic that I talked about, what I'm using is a counter attacking system that I created recently. This is the original and then there's a third version of it that I'm going to show you soon. So what I have here is a ball playing defender and a ball uh, on defend duty and a ball playing defender on cover duty. I do have two complete wing backs, which is why Patterson is now in the team. And then I had Jose Gaia playing as a complete wing back on the left hand side. So 
In defensive midfield, I had a Regista, one of my favorite roles this year, that is complementing the roaming playmaker that I used to use before. But Regista is the one in there now. And Moises, um, Moises Caicedo is usually playing as my advanced playmaker on support, which is where I had a problem with Ada Gula because he always wanted to play. And when I was playing this tactic, Ada Gula was either playing as an inside forward on the right or he wasn't in the team at all. So I had Florentino Luis playing as my ball winning midfielder on support ET. And then the defensive midfielder was a guy that I signed from PSG known as, where is he now? Warren Zaya Emery. So Zaya Emery is more of a register compared to all the other players that I have. So as often as he didn't play this role, I usually have him, you know, play. He was the ideal register for me, right? And then the other player that I know used to play as my register was Marcos Llorente. Marcos Llorente sometimes is going to play as a... Regista for me in my team or he's going to play out wide as a complete wing back on attack DT. So I had a lot of changes that the AI was not ready to, they were not prepared to actually deal with. So I could tweak the team anyhow I wanted. And that's how we were able to stay at, stay in front of Real Madrid and not allow, they couldn't even touch us, they couldn't even catch us. They did go on to beat us once, but like I said, I could have won that game if I was a bit more intentional with the approach that I used to actually play the game. So. In my attack, I had an advanced forward on attack. Much later, I changed the advanced forward to a pressing forward because I noticed that Lataro Martinez enjoys playing as a pressing forward, but that's not really a big deal. Advanced forward, pressing forward. In this case, it really didn't matter. Anybody that I put in there could actually go on to play. Another role that I have for the striker is Memphis Depay. Memphis Depay will play as a deep line forward on attack. So the alternative tactic to this was a slight tweak that I made to the fullback positions. So what I had before was complete wingbacks on attack, right? So now I have generic fullbacks on attack duty. And then instead of the cover duty playing as a ball playing defender on cover, I have him playing on defend duty. This was a bit more solid and it also helped us have a balanced mentality to the tactic. You can see the system in here. We had a wide attacking width looking for the overlaps on both flanks. So this is ideally what I was using for most of the season. We're running a lot at defense and being more expressive and we're playing with much more direct passing sometimes slightly more direct passing with standard tempo so this is usually for teams or for games where the opposition is going to sit deep and they're going to try to be very defensive so i'll just play balance and then encourage them to actually come out from the defense then i can go ahead and hit them on a counter attack or try to break them down with them knowing that we're not being overly attacking in our system we can actually go ahead and play this system and they will not anticipate it so those are the three tactics that I used to actually dominate La Liga with Atletico Madrid. I'm going to attach a link in the description to actually pack all these three tactics for you. So in case you do want to try them out, especially the next two tactics, the 4 systems. And then, yeah, you can let me know how it works out for you. For Atletico Madrid, I did have the players that can actually pull this off. So it does help to actually have good players and try to fit the right players into those roles like the ball winning midfielder you have to actually check the player attributes for players that can actually play the role that's like the rule of thumb for me Marcos Llorente can play as a ball winning midfielder and he can also play as a register because he has the attributes to actually do that so if you go ahead and check those players that if they do have the attributes you can actually plug them into the system and then they should be able to do a good job for you in your league that's it for this video i'll see you in the next one do enjoy your football manager and if you did enjoy this video do let me know in the comment section and if you're new to the channel remember to hit the subscribe button so you can get notified when more tactic videos like this do come out here on dark horse fm i'll see you in the next video